password equals um, let's say um, John at one to three or something like that. This will any public network you're in, you're basically exposing your entire username and password structure to others. To avoid that, whenever we want to send, let's say, delicate information, we often end up using post request. Let's try doing that. To do that, I just need to use requests dot post. That's pretty much it. All you need to do is just provide two set of information, a URL and what is the data that you're passing through. URL is which URL and the data is, please observe, optional dictionary or a JSON. So there are two ways you can provide a data. Data can be um, just a dictionary or it can be a JSON data particularly. This depends on what the website is expecting. This depends on what the web, web page is expecting. Take a look at this. Uh, we were at add a product. In add a product, you can see content type is application slash JSON. Since this is the content type, the web page will expect JSON data to be sent. That's the whole idea. Now, uh, with this, let's go ahead and uh, uh, try to create, uh, let's say, our own uh, um, Python requests, uh, post requests for this. Let's start with this. Uh, I'm just going to copy this for reference so I can have access to it um, in case where um, we should be able to. Um, Oh, sorry, we should be able to just uh, uh, perform this right away. So yeah, let's start with this. I'm copying this only for reference. Here. Right, so the post request URL is this. So in request.post, let's put ahead with this URL. We'll get a response and I'm just going to print response dot status code first to begin with to see if it works as expected if you run this the response dot status code is 200 which means it has worked as expected now let's take a look at what is the content of that response when you run this response dot json you get to see it's just an ID. Since we are not sending any product, it is acknowledging that no product is inserted. That's it. If you send any product details, it will respond with the product information as well. And uh, that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to send our product information here. To send our product information, let's take a look at this. Take a look at this. The JSON data is like this. I'm just going to copy the JSON data they have given, for example. We're going to store this as JSON data equals this. Um, again, let me uncomment this out. Right. So we have title as BMW pencil. OK, um, so yeah, let's keep it at that. Let's assume this is what we are looking to purchase. Now, here's the thing. This is a dictionary. You cannot send a dictionary directly most of the time. Whenever you want to send this content, you need to convert it into JSON string and send it. You take a look at the example they have given. In this example, they are using JSON.stringify and then send it. The same thing we need to do here. Our JSON data, we need to convert that is currently a dictionary. We need to convert it to a JSON content and send it. And we should send it with a key called data. Within data, I'm going to send JSON dot. Now, please remember, when you want to convert to JSON, in this case, you're going to use dumps. So um, that's pretty much it. Please don't forget this basic thing of serialization and deserialization. We're just serializing it now. That's pretty much it. Now, once we have done this, let's try running this. And let's see the response. Um, apparently, the response is still this. We are not 
getting let's see the output as a title for some reason though we have added this all right let me add one additional thing just in case to check to see if this might help with websites sometimes this happens um so i'll just take again if you see here they've added headers is application slash json so let's particularly add that as well so this is the header that we are adding um let's do that so i'll just write headers equals headers so if there are any data you can use it in data key if there are any headers that you're passing you can pass it in headers key you're particularly saying that we are sending a json data and you're particularly specifying the json data you're sending as well let's see if this works as expected um oh um there seems to be oh i am so sorry this should be equals i've copied from one programming language to another and that's where yeah let's ignore that yeah there we go i just had to add this header with this we get this particular information that the title is bmw pencil it's just an acknowledgement that you have sent this i'm acknowledging that i have received this that's what it says so this is how we can use a uh, post data and generally in post data we send username and password and so on and you can see here that information is not added to the url it is sent inside a json data that's the advantage of it so yeah uh, this was just a very small intro on uh, uh, requests and how you can perform operations like uh, uh, get and post with requests specifically <clears throat> now with this, uh, let's move on to the uh, next part of this. We have a lot of internal uh, inbuilt functions and inbuilt uh, uh, operations that are available in Python that we are yet to learn before we move on to some advanced concepts and advanced logic. So we're just gonna try to do that together. So I'm just gonna create one more file here called uh, inbuilt operations.py it's just a lot of different things that we're going to learn so i'm just putting it up as uh, inbuilt operations for now that's pretty much all we're doing here all right um so yeah let's go ahead and try this out <clears throat> first things first let's start with this in our current case um a lot of functions that we uh, haven't learned a lot of functions that exist uh, within python from basics are things like anonymous functions also called as lambda functions this is one thing that we haven't learned yet so let's just uh, quickly walk through all these things that we haven't looked learned and we haven't worked on um so um we get to see and work around this all right so first things first lambda or what we call as um, an anonymous function is essentially a function that exists within python without a name as it's name suggests lambda now here's how it works if you want to perform square of a number just the basic most basic and simple example if you want to perform square of a number you can create square equals lambda let's say x and your output will be x to the power of two so the syntax here is pretty simple lambda followed by input and output that's it what is the input you want to give and what is the operation you want to perform and output that you want to provide that's pretty much all that you need to know here and this will be the function that will call this so we'll have a function called uh, square and whenever we call square function it's going to perform this lambda operation where it's going to take x as input and return x to the power of 2 as output now 
to perform this uh, all you need to do is just uh, perform let's say square of 5 we'll just print it that's pretty much all we will do now once you run this okay i'm so sorry i need to run a different file oh nine yeah once you uh, again i need to import this let's do that All right, there we go. And this is your output. Square of five is gonna give you 25 as the output. And here's why we use Lambda for our understanding. Here's why it's useful and important. These functions are also called inline functions. These are the functions where you write one line of code or one expression, one line expression, in front of the input it's not going to be 5 10 15 lines of code generally it will just be one line of code you can write multiple lines of code just for reference but we often do not do that it's done for a purpose that is because any expression that is defined within this operation in lambda the result of this expression is automatically returned by lambda and it will perform it over here these are some simple and easy functions that you can perform now, uh, instead of square, let's call this as power, where you want to calculate power of 5 to the power of 3. In that case, you're going to send two variables, x, comma y, and you're going to return x to the power of y. So you can send two parameters, and you can return two parameters as well. Now, when we already have functions, why do we need lambda functions? Here's the reason. When you're performing very small operations, small operations of single line, one to two line operations, you don't need to add a separate function. You can write it in short Lambda. And Lambda allows you to perform functional programming. Functional programming is where you can add certain constructs like map, filter, and reduce, which we can use within Lambda. That is the next thing we'll just take a look at. So a lot of these are um, the purpose of it. And uh, uh, yeah, we're just gonna try to utilize and uh, uh, work around Lambda and see uh, how we can apply this. Uh, but before we do that, I would, um, I highly request one thing. I'll just be on mute for a few seconds. Please wait for the same. Yeah, apologies for the slight delay. Uh, moving back to this. Yeah, um, that's the main purpose of Lambda, which we will see uh, further in detail, how we can use some other functions on top of it that will help us make it easier. <clears throat> All right, let's try this out. Now, one of the first things, uh, one of the few functions that we can start working on uh, on top of Lambda is map. There are a few functions in Python that are inbuilt, um, which are used to apply specific function on multiple parameters and so on. These are map, filter, sorted, reduce, yield. And uh, these are the ones we're going to take a look at. And we'll try to see and learn um, how they work and how they perform. Let's start with the first one. Uh, sorted anyway, we have looked at it. So let's ignore that. Let's go ahead with this. First one is map. Um, the idea of map function is that uh, it's an inbuilt function where <clears throat> any operation you do, or it's a function that 
is used to apply a function. Now, this is where things will get slightly complicated. Uh, let me write this down. Map is a function within which you write another function. And this function will be applied to any iterable you specify. That's the whole idea. There are going to be two parameters in this syntax, a function and an iterable. So you're going to have a particular function here um, that will be applied to each element of the iterable. That is, if you have an iterable like uh, 1, 2, and uh, 2, 3, and so on, if, if it's a list of tuples and you want to apply a function to each element of the tuple, that is calculate 1 power 2, 2 power 3, and so on, you can do that using this particularly. And uh, that's basically how it works. Right. So uh, with this idea, uh, let's start and uh, take a look at how this works. Let's see how this um, particularly works out. I'm just going to write here the syntax to begin with. We're going to have map of function comma iterable. Right, let's start with this. Uh, again, I have not specified what it does. So let me do that as well. That applies the function to each element of the iterable. That's the basic idea. So let's try this out. Let's assume <clears throat> we have a list of tuples, like uh, 1, 2, 2, 3. Let's say li equals a list of tuples, 1, 2, and 2, 3, and so on. Uh, now I want to apply map to calculate square or uh, power of elements in each tuple. Uh, this is exactly what we want to do in our case. So let's see how exactly uh, can this be done. Given we have a list of tuples like this. Let's start with it. I'm going to apply map of. Again, remember map of function comma iterable. The iterable we have, we know that is our list li. But what about the function? The function we have is a lambda function we'll create. For all of these, we are not going to create another function. These are simple operations. We'll create a lambda function. So remember, if you have an iterable, each element of the iterable is sent as a parameter to this function. So if I write a lambda space x, that means each element of this iterable one at a time is sent to this lambda function once it is sent to this lambda function all i need to do here is return x of zero to the power of x of one that's it because each element is a tuple all i need to do is return tuple of zero to the power of tuple of one that's it once we do this we should get the response now i'm just going to print response so that we understand what is the response type the response type is a map object it's not a list directly map always gives a map object but we need the response in a list to create a response in a list just wrap it within list so you get to convert it to a list and run it you get your list exactly as expected one power two is two two cube is eight and three to the power of four is 81 that's exactly what we get And uh, this is pretty much how uh, maps work when we talk about it in uh, Python in short, just for our reference. So just remember, it applies a function to each element of the function. It always returns a map object, which can be converted to an iterable, if you would like. That's the whole idea. Now that you know what map is and how it works, let's go on to the next function. Uh, again, I just want to point this out. We are still learning a few functions. These are probably the last few functions that we're going to learn on a basic level of Python. 
And these are quite important functions. These are some functions that we rarely use, but they are quite important when we start working on a lot of things in reality. Um, so you never know when you might just need to use them. Just something we uh, need to be aware of and we need to remember. So yeah, uh, let's go ahead and uh, continue from here. Aftermap, the next thing we're gonna take a look at is filter. Uh, the whole idea of filter function is similar to map, but it applies an additional condition. This is, again, it applies a function to each element of the iterable. In map, it's gonna return everything, but in filter, it returns only the values or elements that satisfy the filter condition. Whatever do not satisfy the filter condition, we are not gonna return it. I'll give you a simple example. Let's say we have a list of numbers like this. I'm so sorry for that. Let's do something like this. Now, I only want to get int values of them. Whatever are not int values, I don't want to retain them. Only the integer values is what I need to retain. At this point of time, what you can do is apply a filter function. A filter function takes an iterable and applies a function to that iterable. That function of that iterable is, I'll just write lambda. And remember, here's the condition of filter function. Filter will have a lambda function that will apply in such a way that this lambda function either returns true or false. Wherever it returns false, that particular returned value will not be stored in the response. Wherever it returns true, only that value will be stored. That's the whole idea. So whenever the return value is true, it stores it. Whenever the return value is false, it doesn't store it. This is what Lambda does. So we have to write it in such a way that for each element, I have to return if type of X is equal to int or not. That is what I need to know. That is exactly what we need to do. So let's do that. Let's see if uh, uh, we are able to do this and we are able to um, work around this. Instead of identifying type of x is equal to int, Python allows you a better function. Python provides you a better function that is is instance. Is instance is an inbuilt function within Python where you have to provide a value and a data type. It will let you know if this value is an instance of this data type or not. So let's see if that helps. So for each element that we take, we just have to return is instance of x comma int. But uh, before we do this, let me just show you how is instance works. Is instance of five comma int, and then I'll also print is instance of a comma int. When you run this, is instance of five comma int is going to return true. Is instance of a comma int is going to return false. And we got to know the response that we needed. This is exactly what we need, true and false responses. So let's do that and let's perform filter. Now, uh, once you have performed filter operation, it will return a filter object. So we need to again convert it to a list and we'll store it as filtered numbers. And we'll just print. filtered numbers. 
or you can just I see it. Once you run this, you get to see filtered numbers are, all, are only one, two, three, four, five, six. The other values which don't have a data type of int are not considered. You're filtering it this way. Uh, just a small example I wanted to give within filter. And uh, after filter, the third function that we have is called reduce that we often use. Again, it's going to do the same thing. Applies a function to each element of the iterable. Now, here's the simple thing that you need to know. Whenever you have iterables, list, set, even dictionaries, or tuples, or even a string, a string is also an iterable. And whenever you want to perform some sort of operation on the list, just think, do I really need to use a for loop and everything? Or can I replace it with a list comprehension? Along with that, instead of a list comprehension, if it's complicated, can I just make a map function out of it? Or can I just make a filter function out of it? Or can I just make a reduce function out of it? These are some things that uh, uh, might help out a lot, mainly because Lambda functions are faster than typical functions. Um, when you have a function with define, they're often slower than Lambda because you have to make a call to the function and then get back. These are often faster. Just something that we need to know. All right, so the next thing is return, um, sorry, uh, reduce. Uh, reduce will apply, let's point it out, a binary function. That is, it takes two arguments and I'll specify why we why it takes particularly two arguments. It performs cumulative uh, operations on all um, the items of the variables, just or all the yeah, items of the iterable. This should be simple enough for us to understand it. But yeah, we'll go ahead and start taking a look at reduce. But before we do that, I think uh, uh, we have again reached the two hour point since our session started. So yeah, um, the usual norm, let's uh, take a small break and uh, let's join back in 15 minutes. I hope that's fine with everyone. Sounds good. Right. Thank you. So let's join back by 1045 Eastern time. Um, thanks a lot.